Do you want to become mentally stronger? If so, I invite you to come and join us at the Mental Strength School, the world's leading mental strength training platform. The school is your one-stop shop to get a cutting-edge, evidence-based and comprehensive mental strength training all year round. It's going to give you the tools, the insights and the techniques that you need to rise to your challenges, feel happier, unlock your potential and ultimately be the best version of yourself. Check out all the details in the show notes or on my website at meliobryan.com slash mental strength school. Hey, I'm Melio O'Brien. I'm the host of the Deep Resilience podcast. And in this podcast, I'm going to be sharing with you the right tools, skills, and insights that you need to stay mentally strong, no matter what life is throwing your way right now. I'm here to support you, coach you, and comfort you as you navigate through the hard times of your life. Today, I'm going to be talking about the power of awareness and how to use mindfulness to transform your state of mind. The human mind is a double-edged sword. The helpful part of the mind is that it's great at solving problems in the external world. It's great at thinking about goals and planning the steps towards them. It's great at figuring things out. It can help us to learn new skills. And it's a wonderful survival machine. That is, it's always thinking about how to keep you safe. And if danger does happen, the mind will be very, very quickly at responding and helping you to avoid that or reacting rather. It's got a kind of all these conditioned automatic patterns that when danger arises, it's going to move very quickly to keep you safe. However, the thinking mind, the human mind has a dark side in that it very easily can tip into patterns of worry and anxiety, rumination on the past and beating ourselves up, get stuck in negativity and pessimism. It forms limiting beliefs. It often generates a constant sense of lack, you know, where you never feel good enough and it always wants more. It has a form that it takes that we often call the inner critic that can crush our confidence. And it gets caught up in all kinds of resistance patterns that can cause us a lot of suffering. So while the mind can be very helpful in some ways, its programmed patterns are not always helpful. In fact, a lot of the time, what the mind is doing is hurting and hindering us. So There are many patterns of the mind that cause a lot of suffering and stress when they're left running wild without our awareness. So a lot of people think that the way to fix this is to get rid of thoughts, but that's actually not true. And there's a big body of research that demonstrates that getting rid of thoughts actually only makes them more powerful. It makes them louder and stay around longer. But the incredible power of awareness or what we often call mindfulness, the practice of mindfulness, is that it is the one core skill that not only unhooks us from all of the conditioned patterns of the mind so that we can determine for ourselves where what is helpful for us to follow and use and what is unhelpful, right? So it does two things. It helps us to step back, unhook from the conditioned patterns of the mind and simultaneously connects us to a deeper part of ourselves and an enormous reservoir of wisdom and calm and inner strength. So a good analogy for the importance of mindfulness is to think of your mind as being like the ocean. Okay, the surface is like the thoughts and the feelings including all of the conditioned patterns of the mind. Sometimes the waves of thoughts and feelings on the surface are fairly calm. Other times it's really tumultuous and choppy and we're being kind of buffered by winds and storms. But if our attention is constantly getting stuck here only on the surface, as happens a lot of the time for many of us, 
we're like a dinghy in high seas, just being tossed around at the mercy of whatever waves of thought and conditioned patterns and feelings arise. But if we can learn to drop our attention a little deeper, then we immediately are able to take a step back from those thoughts and feelings and we're no longer so yanked around by them. So then we become untangled from the thoughts that create our anxieties, our ruminations, our negativity, our restless nights, and we find some mental space. And now that we have that mental space, we can respond instead of reacting to those waves and we can live more intentionally. For instance, if there's helpful thoughts, we might choose to engage with those and follow those. And if there's unhelpful thoughts, we maybe choose to not engage. But most importantly, we can just live a more intentional, a more meaningful, a more purposeful life as human beings. So again, we often find that in the same way that just below the surface of the ocean, there's a calm, deep and still place. So it is with us. If we shift our attention from being caught on the surface waves all the time and anchor ourselves in a deeper awareness, we find a place of wholeness, of wisdom, of deep strength and love. We touch down into awareness itself or what I often call in my teachings our core self. Core self just meaning this is deeper than thought. It's the deepest, closest in experience of who we are. The ocean is a great metaphor for how we can find this deeper awareness and our greatest source of inner strength. And we can do that through the practice of mindfulness. There is truly so much power in simply being present. That's why mindfulness is such a crucial practice to becoming mentally strong, to becoming deeply resilient, which is actually a a more integrated, a more holistic sense of inner strength. It's mentally, emotionally, and spiritually strong. Awareness is not just a blank screen that's able to look at thoughts. Awareness, this core self, has its own kind of intelligence that is a different kind of intelligence than the thinking mind. While the thinking mind is good at logic and planning and figuring out things and survival skills, this core self holds an intelligence that we might abbreviate into wisdom. In fact, there are seven qualities of this deeper sense of self that I've discovered over the years of working with people and also through my own practice and coaching. So I've found that no matter what difficulties or mental struggles we are working with at the time, no matter how insurmountable or overwhelming these things feel, when I can work with a a client and they agree to pause and I can help them to become deeply present, you know, getting them to inhabit the present moment, be mindful, clients will often start to show these qualities. Okay, there's seven of them. We'll just go through them here. The first one is peace. For starters, with enough presence, enough letting go of thinking or unhelpful emotional and mental patterns, clients immediately start to feel less fear, stress and overwhelm and start to feel greater peace. This usually comes with a sense of kind of almost like snapping out of it or waking up and touching in on this still place inside where they suddenly knew everything was okay. You often see an immediate change in their facial expressions when they touch this place of inner calm. The second thing is a sense of clarity. Connected with the self, Clients often find that whereas at first their problems and their emotions and their thoughts seemed all-consuming and they felt incompetent to solve them, 
They felt maybe stuck or confused. Suddenly they seem connected to a deeper wisdom and they often immediately gain a new perspective, often suddenly realizing they had the answers all along and they feel confident that they actually do know what to do in their lives. And maybe not their whole future worked out, but they know what to just do next. So the next thing is a sense of playful curiosity. Connected to the self, there's often quite a notable switch in clients from being stuck in a lot of judgment or resistance about certain aspects of their experience, including difficult thoughts and feelings, to a non-judgmental curiosity about them. Often this is displayed as a playful, open-hearted, but unattached attitude. And this in turn kind of softens them and takes the charge out of those thoughts and feelings. It's almost as if the thoughts and feelings sensed that the battle was over and there was this new friendly, childlike energy that had arrived on the scene. And it's almost like they just relaxed and let go. Love. Now, love is the the fourth of the seven strengths of the self. And this is the most prominent of all the seven strengths. When connected to the core self, I find that clients often understand things totally differently and they spontaneously show compassion, care and kindness, both to themselves and also to their attitude to others. This is often extended to feelings of benevolence and friendliness to all life. And this love for life is often a catalyst for change in uh, their lifestyle, living in a way that reflects this new perspective, this new relationship to the world around them. Courage. Connected to this deeper sense of self, I find that courage arose in people They show a willingness to go inside and turn towards pain, fear, shame, difficult emotions and feelings that they once found really scary and they just carefully investigate it. They're willing to feel it and act on what they might see if they need to. They also showed a very firm commitment to their own values and doing what feels right deep in their heart, even if it wasn't smooth or easy. They were very brave in the face of challenge and showed the ability to recognize where their own actions may have caused suffering for others and take actions to make amends. And this courage also allows people to be more authentic in their expression of who they are because they're unafraid of what other people are going to think. The sixth of the seven strengths of the self is fulfillment. Connected to this sense of a deeper self, people seem to find a new sense of contentment. They feel grateful for life and feel filled with a sense of abundance for all the beauty and the goodness in their life. They're connected to a sense of just wholeness, completeness, and a fulfillment that isn't really dependent on everything in their life working out a certain way. It's not really dependent on anything external. It's just a feeling of well-being that sometimes arose along with it a sense of humour and cheerfulness about their situation, like almost a just totally different perspective, what was once a really serious issue. And suddenly they kind of realise yeah, maybe it's not as serious or difficult or hard as they thought it was. And there's so much beauty and gratitude in life as well. And finally, the last one is connection. The core self seems to have a much deeper sense of connection with life. People would often report feelings of being connected to something larger than themselves. Sometimes this was a sense of spiritual connection. Other times it took the form of just a deeper sense of connection to the people, to the planet, to all of life or a feeling of connection to a much broader perspective of life beyond the normal circumstances of life. And this in turn often led to feelings of belonging and wholeness and reverence for life. So suddenly with this panned out view, again, their problems seem to feel much smaller and more manageable in the context of a much broader and larger worldview. 
So deep resilience is based on the assertion that everyone has access to the seven strengths of the self. And by the way, I amalgamate these seven strengths. I look at those seven strengths of the self and I say, if you amalgamate those together, that's what I would call wisdom. So deep resilience is based on the assertion that everyone has access to this wisdom, these seven strengths in any given moment. They don't need to be created or built or manufactured. They just need to be accessed. And the ability to access and embody these strengths is what I call wisdom. Wisdom is the intelligence of the core self. Now, the accessing of this wisdom comes from a simple practice that in the mainstream is called mindfulness, this ability to inhabit the present moment, to drop out of the thinking mind. Now, you don't lose all your thoughts. They're still there, but they're not dominating you. So you drop out of the mind and into awareness. And there's the ability at that point to let awareness be in the lead, to be self-led, I call this. Yeah, so when when you're self-led, your thinking mind and your emotions are still operating, but in a more effective way. Yeah, your emotions and your thoughts are regulated in a healthy and skillful way, but you're aware and you're intentional about your actions. You're responding and not reacting. So there's more to mindfulness than meets the eye for most people. And so my invitation knowing that mindfulness has a much deeper and greater capacities than most of us know. The invitation for the week ahead is to start to bring mindfulness into your life in just one really simple way. So you can practice mindfulness through meditation and I highly recommend it. And I'm also going to put in the show notes a link to some free meditations you can try from my website. They're at meliobryan.com slash free meditations. But you may not like meditation. Not everybody does. Not everyone finds it comfortable or easy to meditate. Not everybody finds it beneficial to meditate. You might be a person who benefits from practicing mindfulness in a different way. So this week I want you to experiment with mindfulness as a practice. You can choose to meditate even for five minutes a day, or you can try this simple exercise just once a day for the next week. So seven times in the next week, once a day, see if you can just take a pause and just take five deep, slow, mindful breaths just to center yourself and connect with that deeper wisdom within you. So that's our practice. I'm going to be practicing alongside you once a day. If you care to, you can meditate, but once a day, just taking a pause, take five deep breaths and have an intention to connect to some deeper wisdom within you and to proceed from that moment with as much awareness as possible, just being present in the moment. So you can go to the show notes again to get that free meditations and I wish you a wonderful week of practice ahead and I look forward to being here again with you on the next episode of the Deep Resilience Podcast. If you know someone who you think might benefit from listening to this episode, share it with them. Sharing it could really help them to feel better and improve the quality of their life. And if you found this episode helpful, remember to subscribe to this podcast so that you can receive more tips on growing your inner strength and keep practicing along with us every week. And if you'd like some more support in becoming mentally, emotionally, and spiritually stronger, come check out the offerings I have to support you on my website at meliobryan.com. As well as coaching and course options, I also have a bunch of free resources for you, including a free deep resilience care package, which you can begin to use right away to get some immediate relief from stress and suffering, improve your resilience and mental well-being, and help you navigate whatever you're going through with more wisdom, skill, and confidence. You can find the links for all of that in the show notes. Thanks again for tuning in.
Take care and stay strong.